In this video, I'm going to show you how to use Runway's awesome camera controls to help bring your videos to life. I'll show you loads of different shots from basic to advanced and how they can elevate your storytelling and help you get that cinematic look. I'll also share some of my favorite techniques. Okay, let's get into it. To access the advanced camera controls, make sure you're logged into Runway and you're on the Gen 3 Alpha Turbo mode. Then come down to the camera control icon and here we have all of the settings. Once you have uploaded your image, you can start to play around with the settings. You can choose either 5 or 10 second generations and if you want to test some of Runway's built-in movements, you can do that by clicking on one of these prompts down here. Once you click one of them, it will add in the settings automatically, and it will also add a prompt in for you. So I'll be going through all the different settings to show you how they can change your shot. So let's have a look at the zoom shot. Throughout this video, I will use some of my favorite shots in movies, and I'll try to replicate them within runway. So for this shot, I was inspired by the shot in Joker, where he's sitting in the bus and it slowly zooms into him. It's a really simple shot, but it's extremely effective. So I generated this image of a man sitting on the bus alone, and it's got the same feel and look as the clip from the Joker film. I added into the prompt man sitting down on a moving bus, and I zoomed in by two and gave it a bit of a vertical shift up. So it zooms in closer to his face. And this is the result. The great thing about this shot is that it kind of draws you into what the character is going through. I would have liked the background to be moving as if he was on a moving bus, but I'm still pretty happy with the results. And for this shot, I was inspired by the Shining film with Jack Nicholson. So I generated this picture, which looks like an uncanny valley version of Jack Nicholson. And I used similar settings. So just a 1.5 on the zoom in and a 0.5 on the vertical. If you want a slow push in, definitely use lower values. And the result looks great. But as you'll see towards the end of the video, it kind of gets a bit weird as he kind of takes off a mask, which is very odd, but I guess you can always just cut it before that happens. Now I'll try adding a lip sync to this video to see how it looks. All you have to do is click on lip sync and then add in your audio. So this is what it looks like. How does this look? The camera is zooming slowly into my face. Does it look all right? How does it look? I think that turned out really well, actually. Runaway does a really good job at creating realistic lip syncing. And here are some other examples of the zoom in. So I've got this shot of a police officer holding his gun towards the camera. Now, what's interesting about this one is that there are some elements that are out of focus. So the front of the gun and his face are out of focus. But as it zooms in, it pulls focus to his face. And it does a really good job at making it feel like the camera is slowly moving into him. I put a slight movement to the right and then up and just a 1.5 on the zoom in. So you can kind of use the little camera icon as your center point. So move that camera icon towards where you want the end point to focus on. And here again with these race cars on the street, just using a subtle zoom in through in between the cars. And it's really interesting as it's added these reflections onto the side of the cars, which move as the camera moves between them. And this shot here only uses a 0.2 zoom in, and it just really does add to that tension in the shot. So it's just slowly, slowly creeping into the character in the seat. It just adds so much tension. It also works really well for landscape videos. So if you want to establish a scene like this one here, you can have the camera act as, say, like a drone and fly over your scenery, which I think works really well. While I've shown you shots at zooming in or pushing in, now let's have a look at zooming out. So zoom out or pull out shots can give you a feeling of the subject being lonely or isolated. Like in this shot here, I've got a man lying down in an alleyway and I zoomed out by 4.8 and gave it a subtle roll. And it just gives him this kind of hopeless feeling to the shot. The awesome thing with the camera control is adding more details into the prompt. So for this shot here, I've got a man standing in a warehouse and I put into the prompt, the camera zooms out and there are plants on the floor. So I gave it a subtle zoom out and I added a bit of down on the vertical setting and it worked really well. 
So as you can see, as the camera pulls out, it reveals all this greenery on the floor. So it definitely listened to my prompt. And in this one, I added into the prompt there is a trash can on fire. And here's a different image of a man standing in a warehouse. And I added into the prompt, a pile of money is on fire. And it did a great job at interpreting the prompt. And for this prompt, I added there is a hole on the floor with black oil oozing out of it. And while it didn't exactly come out how I intended, it's still a really interesting and cool shot. And I'm really impressed that it actually added in the reflection of the character as the black oil appears. I feel like this is a really cool feature of the zoom out shot, as it works really well to reveal things as the shot is moving out. And as you can see from this video, definitely adds that feeling of loneliness and desperation for this astronaut. It's really interesting how subtle camera movements add a lot to the shot. Now you don't always have to do a slow zoom in shot. You can do what they call a crash zoom, which is used a lot by director Quentin Tarantino. And it looks really unique. So for this shot, I've got an image of what looks like Leonardo DiCaprio hiding behind what looks like a piano. So what I did was I ramped up the zoom to 10 and I just made sure the camera icon was going towards his face. And it added this really cool zoom in shot, which I will speed up after. And then what I did is I took the last frame of that video and created another video from it. So this is the second video I got as I just wanted it to be still with a tiny bit of movement. And then when I take the zoom in shot and speed it up and add it with the second shot, you get this really awesome crash zoom effect. Now let's have a look at tracking and trucking shots. So tracking and trucking are kind of similar to the zoom effect, but the difference is you're zooming in while following a character or a subject. And it's one of my favorite shots, as it's incredibly cinematic. So for this shot, I've got a Batman style character walking through a flaming wreckage. I was very inspired by the Matt Reeves Batman film. So for the settings, I added in a bit of zoom, a bit of a pan to the right, and a bit of a horizontal shift. So it feels like I'm moving with the character while adding a bit of movement. And the result looks incredible. I am so happy with how this came out. With the zoom effect, it feels like you're following the character, as I added into the prompt, trucking shot following Batman walking. And it's even added in some rain and animated the fire. This is one of my favorite shots. And here's another similar shot, but with a different character walking towards an explosion. And again, I think it looks incredible. It's got a really cool cinematic feel to it. So remember to get these shots, make sure your character is in the scene and you type into the prompt your character is walking and just add a bit of zoom to it. And here's another cinematic example of following a character. For this video, I only added a bit of zoom in, and I added into the prompt person walking in the rain. I did a few different videos with similar characters in the rain, and I'm really happy with all of them. It's got that over the shoulder cinematic feel to it. You can also do some trucking shots following people sideways as well. So for this video, I've got a man walking through the park, and I added into the prompt walking left fast, sunlight shining and I just moved the horizontal slider to the left a bit. And it creates a really nice shot. It's done a really good job at making a realistic walking animation and while keeping his shadow intact. And you get a bit of sunlight coming through at the end. Now the only problem with this is I added into the prompt walking left fast, but it's clearly a slow motion shot. If anybody does know how to get the characters moving faster and not in slow motion, please leave a comment down below. And here's another shot of a man walking through a forest. So it works really well at these kind of shots. If you're enjoying this video, please consider liking this video and subscribing to our channel. Okay, back to the video. Now let's have a look at the arc or orbit shot. This is a really cool shot and it was used a lot by the director Michael Bay. It pretty much serves as a kind of hero shot. So as a nod to Michael Bay, I decided to do my own Transformers shot, and it looks awesome. So for this shot, I wanted the camera to move around the Transformer. So I added in a bit of left horizontal movement, and I added a lot onto the pan right. So as you can see, the camera's going to move around and then pan to the right. 
focusing on the transformer. I also added a bit of verticality up and zoom in and a tiny bit of a rotation. And the results look incredible. It's got this really nice lighting coming onto the metal, making the metal feel shiny and quite realistic. I'm really impressed with this shot. And here's another version of another transformer, but orbiting around the other way with a bit of a zoom in as well. These shots have a really epic cinematic feel to them. I wanted to see how far I could push this and see if I could get a full 360 orbit around an object. So I generated this image of a metal sphere and pushed the pan all the way to the extreme. And this is the result. So oddly enough, the start of the video looks a bit weird, but then for some reason it fades into another shot and gives me the impression of a full orbit. So I'm pretty impressed with the second part of the video. And here is another version, which is really interesting as it starts off on the side and then the camera kind of centers itself and feels like a drone flying around it. So I think this works better if you do the 10 second long video. And I'm sure if I extend this video, it will keep wrapping around. So I'll try that now and see how it turns out. And with the extension, it keeps looping around the sphere, which is awesome. So that's a method on how to get 360 orbit videos. Now let's have a look at tilt up and down. So this shot is great at revealing something that's not in the shot on a vertical axis. And again, I was inspired by the Batman film with this shot of the Riddler leaving a question mark in the cup of coffee. It's a really great shot, so I tried to do it myself. So my plan was to reverse this shot. So I maxed out the tilt values and added a bit of verticality to it as well. And this is the video. I think it's awesome how they've added steam to it. And if I reverse this, it does look kind of similar to the shot in the Batman film. And then I tried a different version of the shot where it starts out from a bit further back and then it zooms in, tilts up and focuses on the cup. So what I did was I generated two different videos. I took the last frame of one of the videos to create the second video and then I stitched them together. And I think it works really well. Tilt is great at revealing more of the shot as well. So for this video, I've got a man looking up at a really tall building. I wanted to exaggerate how big this building was and how small he feels. So I added some tilt up on the tilt slider and that was it. And it gave me this awesome video. It's a really cool video to kind of show how huge this building is. And it's also added in some really fast moving clouds, but it's a stylistic choice, which I don't think looks that bad. Now let's have a look at panning. Panning shots move from a fixed position left or right. So this is great if you want to reveal more of your shot on a horizontal basis. And a filmmaker who does this all the time is Wes Anderson. So I tried to emulate a Wes Anderson style shot. So I generated this image that feels like it's from a Wes Anderson film. And I pushed the pan option all the way to the right, as well as a bit of horizontal. And it turned out pretty well. It's got a lot of video to fill in for, so it does get a bit weird with this kind of person appearing out of nowhere. But other than that, it looks pretty good. So what I wanted to do was it pan to another area of the room. So I actually ended up generating this image as well, which is going to be where the first shot pans to. So I made sure to pan in the opposite direction so that when I go to stitch them together, it feels like they organically stitch together. So what I did was I took the first clip and I sped up where it starts moving. And then the second clip, I sped up the first part of that section and merged them together to create the shot. And I think it worked pretty well. This is called a whip pan. And while you might not use it in a lot of cases, it definitely has a unique look to it. And for this shot, I've got a image of a woman warrior with her army. Now, what's great about this one is I've added a subtle zoom into this one, but I've added three to the pan right option and it works really well as with the pan option, it just shows more of the army that she's got with her. So it just helps establish more of the scene. Now let's have a look at roll. A roll shot can give you that kind of disoriented, trippy kind of look to a shot. As you can see in this shot, I've got a roundabout with some cars around it, and I only added a small amount onto the roll slider. 
Now, while the video isn't that great as cars just kind of appear and disappear as they go around the roundabout, I do like the look of the subtle roll zoom in. And in this shot, it's looking up at some skyscrapers and I choose to zoom out while rolling and it's a really unique look. It kind of gives me those Inception vibes. And in this one, I did the opposite. I zoomed in and you can also add a bit of tilt to give it a more disoriented kind of feel. Now let's have a look at vertical shots. So again, I'm using a Batman example and I wanted the camera to rise up as Batman was walking out of the flames. And while zooming out and rising up, it has this really dramatic look to it. So in this shot, again, I've got someone looking up at a tall building and I wanted the camera to move up with the building while leaving the character behind. And this is where the vertical camera comes in handy as hopefully it should just rise up. I also added in some zoom and tilt. So as you can see, it kind of pushes up towards the top of the building and the result looks great. As you can see, it moves up and feels like a drone is flying up towards the top of the building. It's also great at revealing environments as well. So I've got this really beautiful landscape shot and I've added a lot onto the vertical slider as well as a tilt up and a subtle zoom in. And it does this really nice kind of establishing shot for the environment. So it's great at reaching up and just showing a lot more of your shot, which is perfect for landscape videos. And again, with this car shot, the camera already is quite low down. So I wanted it to move above the cars and to see what's going on. So I pushed the camera up and it reveals some rival cars, which is pretty cool. Now let's have a look at combining shots. So I had an idea of using one single image and using every different camera movement and stitching them all together. And the finished shot looks really interesting. And this is what it looks like when they're all stitched together. So how I did this, I took a clip, I duplicated it, and then I reversed that second clip so that when they go together, it flows seamlessly. And I also sped up that second clip. I did the same for the rest of the shots and once edited together, it creates this unique moving shot. So make sure to test out this technique. Okay, so we've reached the end of this video and I urge you to go and try out these advanced camera controls. If you have any tips or tricks on how to get really cinematic shots, please leave a comment down below. And it would be awesome if you could like this video and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. And feel free to click the image you can see on screen to watch one of our other videos. Thanks for watching.